Hi, it's Eleanor from Birdsang here and today I want to explore um, what happens when you get quite far through your pregnancy, perhaps you are sort of 36 or 37 weeks and you have had lots of plans of how your birth is going to be and then you suddenly find out at the last minute that your baby is breech, so that means that their head is up at the top and hasn't turned around, which is the preferable starting position for labour. Help, my baby is breech, what do I do? So um, this happens fairly frequently. It's um, unfortunate that we have this kind of fear around breech babies. And um, in fact, I think the very first thing to do is to try not to panic. Um, there's lots of reasons why a baby may not turn and there's also things that we can do to encourage them to turn. Um, babies can turn right up to 40 weeks, although generally speaking by about 37 weeks we would have expected them um, to have turned head down on their own because after that point there's not a huge amount of space left in the uterus so it just makes it a little bit harder. Now, um, there are various um, suggestions of what you can do. And um, again, once you've, once you've calmed down and you've stopped panicking, one of the most important things to do is to remember to use your brain, okay? Being informed makes a huge amount of difference. It helps you to stop panicking and it helps you to understand what your options are and what your choices are. So remember, Benefits, risks, alternatives, implications, nothing for any course of action that you choose to take. Now, um, one of the um, first things that I recommend people to do if they discover that their baby is breached late in their pregnancy is to go to a website called spinningbabies.com. Now, it's a fantastic resource and it's all about the different positions that babies can be in um, during um, labour and pregnancy and it gives a whole series of different kinds of movements and exercises that you can do to encourage your baby to turn. Now it's an evidence-based site and there's an awful lot of research that has showed there's a huge amount of effectiveness in a lot of the things that they do. However, it's really important that if you choose to do some of the exercises that they have on their site, you do not do them on your own. Some of them require you to get into slightly odd positions, like one of them is an inversion. So that means you kind of have to make yourself a bit upside down. And it's really important that you have somebody else with you to support you through this, uh, because the last thing that you want to do is fall and injure yourself. So really, that's very, very important. And depending on what position your baby is in, um, there will be different things that may be suggested to you. But also the, the, the exercises are uh, really needed to do on a daily basis, if not two to three times a day. So you need to kind of be committed um, to doing that. Just doing it one time might not necessarily encourage the baby to turn. So that's absolutely the first port of call. And I will post a link um, for everything that I've talked about in the description of this video so you can go off and find that other information. There's also um, some evidence to show that acupuncture and moxibustion, which is where um, a very small amount of a kind of herb is placed at different parts of the body and, and, and it's burned a little bit like incense, um, very close to the skin. And this can um, encourage the baby to turn. There, there have been some studies on this that does show that it can help. Although um, most really reputable acupuncturists tend not to take people on just for one session to, to, to try to ch change your baby. And it's most effective when it's done as part of a longer um, series of treatment with acupuncture. So it's a really good idea to um, talk to your acupuncturist about that and see what they've got to say on the subject. There is also um, some um, other things you can do. Chiropractic has a technique called the Webster technique, um, which is a way of making sure that your pelvis and your sacrum and your spine are all in really good alignment, and that can encourage the baby to turn on them on their own. 
Um, looking at studies on this, there seems to be sort of some differing views. The chiropractic community hold up studies to say, look, it's really effective. Um, some of the other more objective studies are saying it's not really clear whether this has an influence or not. So I think more has to be done on the subject. But I certainly know that um, having a really well aligned pelvis um, is really beneficial for labour and seeing a chiropractor um, is never going to hurt um, and is always going to make sure that your body's in really good alignment. So whether or not it helps change your baby, I don't know, but certainly it's going to put your body in a really good position to um, be as aligned as possible and, and to put your body in an optimum condition for the baby to turn. There is also a little bit of evidence to show that visualisation and a sort of variation on hypnosis or hypnobirthing can also encourage um, babies to turn, which is really interesting, isn't it? And I, I haven't delved really deeply into this, um, but I think that the power of visualisation can be quite strong. And also there's something empowering about having something to do. The hypnosis process is about relaxing and releasing. Um, and actually, you might well find just that being relaxed in your abdomen and just allowing everything to kind of like soften is going to allow a bit more space for the baby to turn naturally anyway. So really, with something like visualisation and hypnosis, you know, it's never going to hurt. So why not have a go at that as well? And again, um, you can find some resources on the internet, but I would always encourage you to seek the advice of a professional um, so they can guide you through the process and in the most effective way. So um, if none of these things seem to work, one of the uh, things that you will often be offered through your hospital is an ECV, which stands for external cephalic version. OK, uh, basically what this is, is an external manipulation of the baby to physically turn them um, in your belly. Now, it's quite a um, it's quite an, it's quite a big procedure. Some people can find it quite painful, um, and often gas and air is offered to the mother um, when it's done. And it's a procedure that's not without risks. Um, so you usually be kept in and monitored for a period um, after you have an ECV. And looking at some of the evidence around ECV, it seems that if it's your first pregnancy, an ECV is usually about a third effective. So in about a third of cases, your baby will successfully turn. Um, in some cases, it will turn and then it might turn back to breach. That can happen. Um, but in about 60 percent of cases in a first time um, pregnancy, it, it, they won't be able to do it. Now, this this increases dramatically. The sorry, success rate increases dramatically for subsequent pregnancy, and it goes up to around two thirds. So, actually, if it's your um, subsequent baby, then an ECV is probably a really um, good choice because it's likely to be much more effective. Now, one thing that's really worth bearing in mind is that sometimes there's a really important reason why your baby has not turned head down. And um, there could be all manner of kind of uh, in unusual stuff going on in your uterus. Um, that means that there's a really important reason why your baby is not in that head down position. So, you know, if your baby doesn't turn head down, um, it isn't actually the end of the world. Um, breach delivery is another version of normal. Now, there are two approaches to um, birth with a breech baby. And one of them is to have a cesarean section. Now, this is the one that most people opt for and is one that is usually you're kind of guided towards doing. Now, obviously, a planned cesarean section um, before you've gone into labour is um, has the least amount of impact on your body because it's all done with lots of time and it's all you know very calm with with the minimal amount of stress on your body but obviously it's a major surgery um, and has quite a long recovery time and has implications for your body because you're cutting through um, a number of layers of muscles in your abdomen and also into your uterus. So actually a caesarean does hold risks 
in itself as a surgery. It has a long recovery and it has implications for future pregnancies because you then, after you've had a cesarean, you are at more at risk at certain other things happening that can be quite serious. So having a cesarean should never be taken lightly, um, but is for many people the um, safest um, choice that they feel is best for them. Now, there is something else that you can do with the breech baby, and that is deliver them completely, normally, vaginally. Now, this is something that used to be done routinely, and it's only um, in kind of more recent decades that the breech uh, uh, cesarean has become really standard practice. And so the amount of breech vaginal deliveries have gone down dramatically because most people aren't choosing that thing. But having said that, if you wanted to have a breech delivery, there are people who are experienced in that. It's your hospital's duty of care to provide somebody who can support you through that process. And there are some different ways that we might manage the labour process. Um, certainly everything that you know about being upright and about following your instincts will be really, really important as well for a breech delivery. But there are certain things that we would manage differently. And there are risks associated with a breech delivery that you don't have with, um, a, a, you know, a head down delivery. So, again, it's really important to make sure that you are fully informed about all of your choices. So the most important thing that happens to you when you find out your baby is breached is you feel like everything has collapsed around you and all of your plans have gone out of the window and that you know you've kind of made all this preparation for your birth and it's not happening in the way that you expected it to be. And, and that is life and that is birth because a lot of the time this happens. So how can you manage this? The best thing is to manage it within yourself. It's to use your brain, do research on everything that is presented to you um, and understand all of your choices and the benefits, risks, alternatives, implications, nothing for each of them. It's also really important to remember that many, many of the principles that you learn in your birth preparation can still be applied even in a caesarean situation. Um, there's such a thing called a gentle caesarean, which is where um, the surgery is done in uh, a really calm way and an incision is made, but the baby is kind of encouraged to kind of wriggle itself out through um, the incision and the, and the process of the cesarean is, is, is made to um, reflect and resemble the natural process as much as it can be. So this is really a fantastic thing to explore and research and to talk about with your consultant. Now, not every... Um, trust not in every hospital trust will be on board with a cesarean or every surgeon it's something that you have to discuss with them um, but certainly it's definitely a way to be able to um, take control over what's happening and may be a bit more part of that decision making process of course with the cesarean section you can also have um, optimal cord clamping so you can wait for the cord to stop pulsating um, you can have immediate skin to skin with your baby and that really helps uh, your body to catch up in terms of a hormonal point of view and it helps um, to stimulate all of the hormones that would have been stimulated through the process of labour um, and so that your body is kind of like getting to where it needs to be really, really quickly after birth. So most importantly, try not to panic. Remember to breathe. Remember that your breath has an influence on your hormones, on your physiology and on your emotions. Always start with the breath. Calm down, take it easy, do your research and know that you will make the right decision for you and your baby. If you have any questions about this or if you wanted to chat about your situation, please feel free to get in touch with me. I'd be more than happy to help you explore some of your options. I've included a load of links in the description of this video to help you do a bit more research and to give you a starting point for some of the things I've talked about. And you might want to just subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you get notified of any future videos that I post about various different things relating to pregnancy and labour and birth. Thanks for watching.